Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are back at the chicken coop and we are going to plant some lovely perennials, the vast majority which are natives here to North America. Depends on where you are in North America if you can say it's native exactly to your area, but they are all natives. They're going to be very drought tolerant. They're going to be pollinator attractors. They're going to be deer resistant. I mean, we are hitting all the marks with these perennials today. And I have lots of fun. It is another gorgeous October day here in North Carolina, zone 7B, of course. And if you are a faithful washer of Creekside Nursery, gardening with Creekside, you know that we built this chicken coop this summer and I am slowly adding to the gardens, creating gardens up here because we had to clear some land in order to put this chicken coop up here and get rid of some um, trees that just had no, no future because of the way that they were leaning and just little tiny trees. So we have cleaned out and now we are rebuilding. We are rebuilding with shrubs and trees and perennials and today, we're gonna have some gorgeous ones in there. Um, so I have loaded up Johnny here with all of my supplies. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna plant. And then we're gonna go place them because as you know with me, I don't have an exact idea of where they're gonna go but we'll figure it out together. I have my plants and my supplies. We will go through it all. Now, here we have in this clump right here, we have got three of different varieties of Salvia gregii. And Salvia gregii is going to be a native really to Texas all the way down into Mexico. It is loves the heat, it is drought tolerant, it can handle heat and humidity, and as you can see, it comes in a range of colors. Blues, purples, um, apricots, deep, deep reds, and I have three different ones right here. I actually ordered these online from, I believe it was Annie's. So if you are a follower of Creekside, you know that we recently launched our e-commerce, right? Our online sales where we're selling plants. And in doing some research on packaging and how do successful nurseries that do great online business, how do they package their plants when they send them to you? So I took one for the team and did a little research and ordered some plants from various nurseries. Annie's is one is very um, well-known nursery that does e-commerce, sells their plants online, ships them out to you. Got some of these and I we have one salvia gregii that Jerry went to a propagation workshop at Plant Delights Nursery um, outside of Raleigh years and years ago. That is salvia Diane, which is a really rich, deep, deep, almost like a raspberry kind of color. Um, love that plant. Talked to a great uh, customer of ours. She has several of these uh, gregii salvias and she loves them. Now, gregii, what is so great about gregii? Again, they are a native plant to North America. They love the heat, they love the humidity. They will be, for me, in a zone 7B, my Diane has been a semi-evergreen. It will depend on my winter, as do does she keep the leaves. She will lose some, it's not as lush as they are right now. Um, but they are, they'll form like a little small, kind of like a mounding shrub, two to three feet tall and wide. They do love the sun. They are drought tolerant. Um, the hummingbirds and butterflies, as you can imagine, absolutely love them. Like, look at this one. This particular um, cultivar is Royal uh, Bumble. Royal Bumble. And it has just those deep, deep, rich, rich flowers, red, rich flowers. Then we have over here, this is Mez Azure, which is a really nice, true, pretty, pretty, as close to about, it still is purple, I know. In the horticultural world, they call blue, purple, purple, blue, whatever. Um, but it is really, really pretty. And then we have the final one over here is simply called um, tangerine. And you can probably see why that is called tangerine. We're going to incorporate these into the garden. They are hardy, I believe. I'll put the specs up there because I'm going off of memory here. Hardy in zones four to nine. They might be hard to find in your local garden center. Maybe you'll you'll strike it rich and you'll find some. Grab them because they are really low maintenance perennials that your pollinators, everything just loves this plant. Um, and 
it blooms on new growth. I'm trying to go through my checklist. It blooms on new growth. So in out of winter going into spring, you can give it a nice haircut, probably back by about half, give it a haircut and just let it go. If you want to feed it, you can just use uh, just kind of a well-balanced slow release fertilizer like plant tone. That would be a great thing to do. So we're going to spread these out because they are three such vast different colors. We're going to spread them out and put them um, as best to my ability next to plants that they the colors will complement each other so that is the plan on that next not a new plant to us but this is going to be going into the ground here for the first time hyssop or agastache this is blue fortune blue fortune is a very very um, well-known variety cultivar of agastache again the common name is hyssop you can see right there on the tag it says native selection will get great size to it um it will be basically a two to three by two to three nice full sun this is going to have lavender blue spikes that the butterflies and the beads absolutely adore it because it has um, those beautiful flowers on it and i will say too i forgot to mention that the salvia gregii um, it is also known um it's in the mint family so both of these if you crush the leaves it'll have a minty fragrance that makes them deer resistant so we love that sweet friend tina of mine gave me three of these um, will make a beautiful presence in the garden so we're going to add those as well now we're going to come back here because i'm going to practice what i preach to you and <laughs> i'm going to show you this poor little plant right here and you're going to go jenny what in the world it is nothing but sticks are you mad woman it's dead it's not dead because look it has I don't know if you can see those little t tiny um, leaves that are popping out on it so this too is a salvia this is gonna be my only one though that is not um, a native I got this from plant delights nursery when uh, mama Alyssa and I went and met Kata. This is Salvia Phyllis Fancy. We actually saw Phyllis Fancy in the garden. Y'all, this thing was spectacular. It is huge. It is like seven feet tall. It's narrow at the bottom and then comes up and it's seven feet tall at the top. So it makes a huge presence in the garden. It is gorgeous. Uh, again, it will be kind of a semi evergreen, just depends on the winter and where you are. But the flowers on this are a white and a blue. If you're familiar with the Angelona um, Angel Face Wedgwood Blue, it reminds me of those colors. Very, very beautiful, kind of a soft color. It will pair really well with bright, bold colors. So, um, yellows and oranges zinnias would be perfect with it sunflowers um, but one so i got it because it was absolutely stunning and then two jerry's mama her name was phyllis so i am bringing part of nana into the garden with phyllis fancy and phyllis fancy that that really does suit nana right she was a she was a fancy phyllis and so we are going to add this one in there as well it is clearly on the struggle bus but I know that it is not dead. When I bought it, it looked just like this, except it had a, a bunch of, it was really, really tall. Had some flowers up there at the top, um, but this plant is root bound. I can tell by when I squeeze this container, it is really, really root bound. I can't keep enough water on it. That's why I'm gonna get it in the ground and be much, much happier um, going into the fall winter and come spring it is going to be absolutely stunning and then last but not least we have some butterfly weed if you uh watched the video a couple of uh monday i believe it was and we did the video on like five simple tips and part of that was to plant food and shelter for your wildlife well milkweed is a great one who loves milkweed monarch butterflies that's absolutely right this is the host plant for your monarch butterflies and so today i have the uh, verticulata this is the world milkweed i ordered this from uh, prairie moon nursery i talked to you about how prairie moon nursery they specialize in perennial seeds and plants went ahead and got them there very reasonable price they are bare roots so if you are looking to uh, support the monarch population milkweed is the way to go 
depending on your growing conditions is going to depend on the type of milkweed that you want to grow. This is the verticulata. It needs medium to dry soil, which is perfect up here at the chicken coop. I did get another one that, per, that perf, um, prefers damp soil. I don't have damp soil up here. I'm gonna plant it more down kind of in the patio backyard bed area where I have some wet areas. So we're gonna talk about this, really fun. I love how they give you all the things you need to know. You get a great, um, oh, I just lost it. Um, you get a great handout, installing bare root plants. They tell you exactly how to plant it depending on the type of roots that they have. Um, and so root examples, all sorts of great things. So we are going to get those in the ground as well. So what I'm gonna do is uh, set the camera up, <laughs> figure out where these are gonna go. And then I'm using my power planter auger with the five inch heavy duty tip. It is going to make extremely great, easy work out of planting these perennials. I of course have my biotone and I have my land and sea compost that I will use as a top dress and maybe a little bit of an amendment in my hole. So without further ado, uh, Jenny has some figuring out to do as to where exactly these sweet things are going to go. And then we get to the plant. All right, my friends, I think I know where all the plants are going to go. Uh, just forgive me. We are going to do the best we can as far as filming. Jenny is filming by herself today and we are entering into the season where the sun is glorious, but the shadows are long. So we're going to do our best that we can do. Um, and don't fret. I'm going to show you every detail and how to do everything just be patient with me first i knew that the tangerines so the salvia gregii the tangerine that beautiful kind of that apricot peachy color that i knew i wanted to put it really kind of close here to my lavender so i have a phenomenal lavender right here I also have a pufferfish. So pufferfish panicle hydrangea is right there. So I kind of uh, counted out my steps. I'm not worried about my, my lavender getting too big, um, but we're basically gonna put the salvia right here. Remember, it's gonna have a low, kind of a wide, and when I, it will get height, but it's not gonna be like four feet tall, right? It has more kind of a mounding trailing habit on it. So it will be really nice right here. The color of the tangerine with the silver blue of the lavender and then of course when it blooms that gorgeous color will pair really well together but even if they bloom at different times which they absolutely could we'll just see um, the foliage works really nicely together and then as I did go down we have all the other things so I'm just going to kind of show you how and walk you through talk you through how I'm going to plant these and then um I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do everybody else. When we're all said and done, then I will come back, take you on a tour, and show you everybody up close on that for sure. Now, I do have my power planter auger. This is the one with the five inch heavy duty tip. Only thing that I use is heavy duty tip uh, because it is, uh, we have thick red clay soil. So I'm going to just move the mulch here, try to reposition the camera so you can see it a little bit better. All right, so all I did was just pull back the mulch. So you have mulch, pine needles, whatever it is that you have, pull it back so that you don't get your native soil all into it and mess it up. Again, I am using the five inch heavy duty tip because auger, because these are relatively smaller containers, three and a half to four inch quart containers. So I don't need a big old huge auger on this. This works perfectly. So I'm just gonna go for it. So you can see that we have our native soil is a beautiful red clay. Yep, that is what we have, my friends. So what we love about not only does it make your life a lot easier physically to dig these holes because you have the drill and the auger, but if you have clay soil, you know that if I were to take a shovel, a spade, a trial, whatever, I'm not going to get loose soil like this aerates the soil as opposed to a shovel or a trial 
I'm gonna have big clods. So if I put a shovel in here, I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna have this massive clump of red clay that I then have to break up. I don't have to worry about any of that because it's already been done and it is nice and aerated and there you go. So what we're gonna do, as always, right? A little bitone in the hole. We're going to take our salvia. Squeeze her out. She has good root system, but is not root bound at all. So let me show you this, because I know my sweet people do love. Good, let's see. Hopefully that is showing you nice and clear, right? Not root bound. I do not need to go in there and break up the roots all crazy. So grab my pad. We're gonna put it because this is a drought tolerant, does not like to be wet, um, basically at kind of ground level. Now I know right here, it looks like this, I'm gonna plant it way too deep. That's just because the soil was pushed up right here. See, when I come down. Now, there we go. Pack it back in. There you go. And another thing that's working to my favor here is that we're on a slope. So everything's gonna drain. It's not gonna sit in water. So all of these plants that I am planting today do like to have, um, be on the drier side. So when you're planting on a slope, that certainly helps because you got drainage, you got gravity working for you. Now, top dress a little bit here with my land and sea compost. The land and sea compost, why do I do that? Why do I top dress with it? Well, because we want to add nutrition, organic matter, um, aeration to this red clay soil. If you wanted to add a scoop of the compost to the hole and mix it in to your, with your native soil, I would be okay with you doing that. But a scoop, not a ton. You don't want to completely remove your native soil and put in only compost. Heaven forbid, if you've got clay, please don't do that with potting soil. That is not what that is meant to do. We just come back with our compost, kind of work it in a little bit as such. I'm saving my name tag. And then I bring back my native, not my native, I got native on the brain, um, my mulch, right? Bring that in. Don't see any more red clay. There you go. Now, I'm going to freak some of you out and you're not gonna, you're gonna think I'm crazy and that's okay. We've talked about this before when we were in the berm with the Agasaki and the Echinacea. We're gonna do the same thing here with this salvia. My main goal when I'm planting these perennials is not the immediate. I am thinking long-term. I want these plants to be in my garden for years to come to help them the most that I can possibly do is adding that biotone, planting them at the correct depth. Next thing, I'm gonna cut off these flowers. Now, you're like, oh my gosh, Jenny, why are you doing that? Because when a plant is flowering, it is sending all of that energy into producing those beautiful flowers because that's programmed in the plant. This is what I'm supposed to do at this time of year. I'm supposed to produce flowers. I don't want it to produce flowers right now. I want it to grow roots. I want it to have a really beautiful, extensive root system. I'm going to forfeit my flowers so that I can have flowers for years to come right? It's just like disciplining our children. It is not fun to discipline our children, but it's necessary so that we can enjoy them for years to come. It's very much the same thing. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to cut off the flowers. If I see any buds, I'm going to take those off as well. I'm going to do this again. Energy into the roots, not into flowers. So that's all I'm doing right now is just trimming it back just like that. Now, as my husband says lovingly, uh, I have a memory of a gnat. I can thank pregnancies for that. Um, and so as much as I would love to say, oh, I'm gonna remember what this plant is, I'm not. And so I like to go around and put little uh, plant tags with their names on them in my garden and on the back i will write 
um, the date. So that way I can remember, oh, well, this plant's, you know, two years old or it's only, you know, I only planted it last fall. I thought it was three years ago or it's only been a year. So on the back, I simply just put the month. So 10 slash 23 on the back. And then on the front, I write the name of the plant. So great little copper tags. I got these from Kinsman, put those in there and then boom. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to uh, go ahead and get the rest of all of the potted plants in the ground. And then when it's time for the butterfly weed as the bare root, then I'll meet you back here and we'll talk ourselves through that whole process together. All right, my friends, so we've got all the salvias planted and the hyssops are planted. I'm going to show you through, I'm going to walk you through and show you where everybody is and explain everything in just a minute. So now we're going to turn our attention though to the milkweed. I have got uh, several bare roots that we're going to put in the ground and because these milkweeds like it dry and hot, we're going to put it on the slope right here um, between the two Nellie Stevens hollies and kind of behind the El Nino. I noticed that I do have, cause I know that I have irrigation that runs to the holly trees and I can see where that irrigation line is, is a drip tube. I am going to plant my milkweeds on the upper side of the hill from that um, drip tube because they do tend to like it dry. These are not ones that like it wet. So I don't want to put it on the other side of the drip tube and water runs down and they rot. Now, a couple of reasons why I am sticking them kind of towards the back of the garden between some tall trees and among, you know, they've got the firelight hydrangeas back there. So you're like, why are you not going to put them front and center of the garden? Well, because milkweed is, right, it is the host plant for the monarch butterflies. And we're keeping our fingers crossed and saying our prayers that the monarchs do find this. When they find it, they most likely are going to strip these plants absolutely bare of all of their foliage, which is great. That is what we want them to do. However, I don't want that to be front and center of the garden. I want that to be tucked in a little bit more towards the back. Uh, so that way, you know, the, the, the less showy the less desirable plants are in the back as far as looks go right so they can go in the back and be just perfectly fine they are full sun they're going to get tons of sun now remember we are in late october so the sun is a little bit different up here but this spot where they are going absolutely bakes my el nino um it's the desert orchid from proven winners right over here that started out as a gallon a one gallon plant in the spring and it is now every bit of five feet tall it too loves it hot and dry so clearly this is a perfect spot for hot and dry plants so what i'm gonna do is um i'm gonna move the camera over there and kind of walk you through that whole planting with the milkweed this is the world milkweed the verticulata 
the spacing is going to be about 18 inches apart on each other. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill my holes first and then I'm going to sit down and kind of do a mass planting of all of those bare roots together. So first things first, we're going to dig some holes and then we will plant together. Okay, now I'm sure I have a feeling that my head is completely cut off from this and that's okay because I'm trying to give you an up close uh, picture of what is happening here. Um, and Brenna wants to be in the shot. Come here. Come on. Ow. Thank you. So in this package, I have four bare roots and they are packaged in some really nice compost, um, very peaty to hold the moisture for shipping. Um, so we pull these out and there are, like I said, four in here. Um, so we're going to separate, obviously, one for each hole. For right now, I'm going to keep these guys together. So here we go. That is the bare root for the milkweed. And we are going to plant it so just the tippy top is sticking out. Of course, I'm going to use biotone because that's what we want is great root growth. Sprinkle some of that in there. Zhuzhi, zhuzhi. You can see that I have the horrible red clay. That is just standard practice around here. I am going to take a little bit of that planting medium, not planting medium, the shipping medium, and then bring back the native soil. That's the great thing though about Prairie Moon is on the package, it actually gives you the planting depth for um, each of the plants that you're getting from them. So we've got that and just my little stems are sticking up. So that is what we want. Obviously, these are these are dormant, right? Because uh, we want great root growth happening through the season. Not gonna see any shoots this season. I will see them later on in uh, next year when warm weather hits. So we've got that. Then all we're gonna do, move these guys over here, bring back the mulch, just kind of lightly cover it. And I am gonna go ahead and put probably little plant markers right here so that way uh, <laughs> nobody disturbs them and we know exactly where they are. So in the meantime, oh, here they goes. So I don't lose it. I'm just gonna for right now, take my stake and put it in front of it. And then I'll come back and put, I'll come back and put the sign on it in a minute. So I got one down, got three to go. my friends all of the plants and the bare roots are in the ground uh, the sun is not my friend right now so we're gonna flip it around and let me just show you where the plants are uh, yeah here we go all right so this is kind of that perspective where the this side of the chicken coop is obviously there's Johnny and then on down to the house we started with the tangerine Greggy eye so it is right here um, and again, I think it'll fill in really kind of nicely. And even if the puffer fish gets a little bit big, it'll be kind of tucked up underneath it. So it'll be perfect, gorgeous next to the phenomenal lavender. And then um, just coming right over here is our first blue fortune. So it will get, you know, some height to it, two to three feet tall. I think it will be really, really pretty up against that Nellie Stevens Holly. 
bring in the pollinators for sure. And then of course, right here in the hole, um, I put, can't see anything. I did put the tags in there so that we wouldn't uh, accidentally pull them up or I don't know, do something crazy to them. So they are all in there. And I thought it was interesting that on the information from Prairie Moon, they said it's better to plant them too deep than not deep enough. So air on the side of going a little bit too deep and they will be doing just fine and then as we come around i wanted to leave some room obviously for you know other things that are going to be coming in here this mahogany splendor uh, hibiscus is an annual it is a foliage plant only uh, one of my precious customers and friends tiffany she gives me one every year she grows them from seed and man when she tells me that they make great fillers for cut flowers do they ever so if you ever see a mahogany splendor grab it it's really fun so just know that this is an annual and it will not be here next year um, so it will leave me some room if i want to put a shrub there and then coming on around we have got another blue fortune right here and then behind that is the phyllis fancy salvia so that will get nice and full and be really pretty here with the fig tree we've got the holly tree of course right and then the firelight hydrangeas so i think that will really at seven feet tall will really fill in that area and be quite stunning and we should be able to see it from the house so that is very fun for sure and then trying to kind of keep it somewhat a little bit balanced i have the other blue fortune right here so we've got that double take eternal white quince and it has uh, a blue fortune on both sides of it so that gives a little bit of balance right there and then moving on down and around we have got the um the mez azure salvia right here this is that lovely lovely blue purple however you want to call it um, i think it'll look gorgeous next to the hibiscus this is the all eyes on me which is a dark foliage with like a pink flower so when those are blooming they will be absolutely stunning and then the last but not least is down here the royal bumble and it is tucked in right there it'll be next of course to the violet cascade butterfly bush and when you come around this way i'm going to turn and pivot because this little this little guy this is our little access road right here so my thought was when you're coming up the road driving up right here you'll see the butterfly bush and then there's the salvia right there again so two to three feet tall and wide with that bright bright red oh it'll be stunning i know that right now you may be thinking oh my gosh jenny you know you're in shade or some of this stuff is in some shade again this is going into winter sun versus the summer sun um, that violet cascade I planted towards the end of the season. Let me tell you, she got plenty of sun right there. So I know that all will be well. My alarm's going off. I think Jerry's home. Um, and so all will be well right here. What I am gonna do is go ahead and get the hose link out, get everybody well watered in because my gosh, it is dry. My poor mustards and Swiss chard have started to uh, get droopy on me. So I'm gonna get everybody watered and that'll be it so as far as that i just need to make sure that things stay watered because we are not getting any rain and we have no rain in the forecast um so which is <sighs> i'm not y'all have my my people down south in in alabama and texas and mississippi i know y'all are dealing with it too so it's just dry it's just you know every year there's something different we're not having a wet fall we're having a dry fall so i gotta keep up with my watering as always i hope you found this fun informative and inspirational get out there have fun in your garden um, it is a great day to do it as always we appreciate you see you in the next video bye friends